All right, hi everyone. Blender 3.6 is here, finally. It's a really big one. I've been surprisingly impressed by like the quality of the features in this this time. There's like a bunch of usability improvements for the user interface, new like UV packing methods, new performance improvements for like loading stuff for the renders. There's of course the simulation nodes for geometry nodes, which is just like massive. Um, so as usual, we're gonna take a look through the feature release page, just discuss what's new, share some opinions, and hopefully this will just get you up to scratch on what new exciting stuff you have at your fingertips. So the tagline for this one is time to interact. This is a long-term support version, so that's why it's Blender 3.6 LTS. So if you're in a studio environment and you want to ensure that the version of Blender you're using is stable and supported for quite a while to come, then you may have more confidence in using an LTS version of Blender rather than the slightly less stable smaller increments. The Blender Foundation and the online developers community proudly present Blender 3.6 LTS. It's the last long-term support release of the 3.x series. So that means we're going to be moving on to version 4 now. So that's quite exciting. That'd be a big one. Then we have the lovely splash screen here from the Pet Projects project, which is coming straight from the Blender Studio. I recommend taking a look at the Blender channel for production logs on this project. It's quite interesting watching how this animated short is being developed behind the scenes. So first of all, they've done something very community centric at the beginning of this page, showing off some of the exciting creations made by members of the community, stuff that you probably would have seen on like Twitter or YouTube shorts, demonstrating some of the lovely features of 3.6. So there's a lot of simulation nodes content in here, although it's not just exclusively that. And there's some stuff in here that I've actually shown in other community roundup videos so you might recognize some of it. I recognize Emilio, Nicole and Tony there. We've got some of Ben's work in here as well. Simon Lee, very nice. Um, so this is like good inspiration. And then of course, to coincide with this, they've done a feature release video, this time hosted by Jonathan Lampel, providing a visual demonstration of the features available. And then on top of that, there's so much content. Simon Thomas has basically done a nice introduction to the simulation nodes in Blender 3.6. Thank you so much. This is available on the Blender Studio channel and it will bring you up to speed. I love this guy, definitely worth watching. In usual fashion, all of the demo files are available for you to download and give a try for yourself. That's one of the beautiful things about Blender being an open community like this is you can just play with everything. Is at this point I should also mention of course you can sign up to the Blender Studio for access to more files related to the Blender animated short projects. So the first thing, the big thing for Blender 3.6 is simulation nodes. What this does is it lets you add well simulation functionality to your geometry nodes trees in the way that changes made inside of simulation zones as they're called can be repeated as the frame time increases and these are things which can be cached and baked out as well. So it really gives you a lot of flexibility for creating all different kinds of effects. So simulation is defined by the simulation zone connecting the simulation input and output. So these are basically two nodes and it's a really interesting design because as you place the nodes in the geometry nodes tree it creates this frame that connects around them so you can visually see what part of your node tree structure is going to be simulated. On the first frame the inputs of the simulation input node are evaluated. In later frames the inputs aren't evaluated anymore the node outputs the result of the previous frame and the simulation output node saves the state for the next frame. So bake and cache, keep control. Simulation results can be cached or baked to storage. This is controlled via a new simulation nodes panel in the physics tab of the properties editor. This is an important feature. It means you don't have to recalculate the results of the simulation over and over again. Of course, it takes more storage space because it's cached, but this is an important efficiency technique, you know, in developing visual effects and animation styles. Um, of course, the properties are quite simple to start with. This is something that I imagine might be expanded upon in time as geometry nodes is further developed but the feature is there, it's a great one to have. Keep an eye, the baked or cached results can be visualized in the timeline editor together with other types of caches. The color of the simulation cache matches the simulation zone in the nodes editor. I love that consistency in the visual styling and the user experience of the software. As usual with these release pages, they have links here where you can click through to see more information. So this will take you to the simulation zone part of the Blender documentation where we can see things explained in a bit more detail. So time to play, this is where they're showing off what can be done. See your simulations in real time. This is a lovely demonstration, I think also by Zimon. Interactive 2D smoke puff simulation using the draw curves tool. So obviously while the frame's running, this is an example of creating visual effects using geometry nodes, which is fantastic. Like, you know, looking back over the years, we can't imagine like doing something this interactive so intuitively in Blender. So it's just like a fantastic step forward, I think. And all of it's parameterized as well. So exciting. There's going to be like so many new products based around simulation nodes. Of course, again, if you think that's going to be helpful, you can download the file. Uh, simulations can be interacted with in real time. Simply hit play and move your objects around. So if you're not caching it, obviously it's calculating in real time, meaning that it's going to be dynamically adapting to the inputs, which means you can get these real-time interactions, which are great. So more demo files, index of nearest, mesh fracturing, what well, the community is already making with geometry nodes. So a lot of people have been like stress testing geometry nodes and simulation nodes, especially on Twitter. You can see so much stuff if you just look for the geometry nodes hashtag or simulation nodes. There's a little shortcut button here to get more inspiration. Now for a couple of other geometry nodes improvements, there's a new index of nearest node. This 
this one's quite important for these proximity effects. It's going to be super handy um, and several performance improvements. There's actually quite a few performance improvements across 3.6. I'm sure we're going to talk a bit more about that uh, coming up. Oh yeah, right here. So cycles sync fast. Loading large geometries into cycles is much faster, meaning rendering can start more quickly after geometry changes or switching to the rendered view. Magnificent. As someone who primarily uses cycles, I really appreciate this. There's up to 60 times faster copying mesh attributes. That's massive. 10 times faster loading curve objects, nine times faster loading point clouds, and four to six times faster loading large meshes. I think that is quite impressive. I can imagine that might have been a kind of difficult thing to optimize, so I'm glad they put the effort into doing it. The light tree feature introduced in Blender 3.5 is now much faster thanks to multi-threading and instancing support. I do love some multi-threading. Up to 11 times faster light tree building thanks to the multi-threading and 190 times faster light tree building on a scene with many instances. If you can't remember what light tree means, it's basically a way of more accurately sampling the scene where there are many lights present. It massively reduces the amount of noise but at the cost of increasing the amount of time per sample, I think, if I remember rightly. So hardware ray tracing. Support for hardware ray tracing acceleration has been added for AMD and Intel graphics cards. Yeah, you're catching up with the rest of us now. I won't read all of this text, but that is great for people that aren't using RTX cards. Um, hardware acceleration makes a massive difference. I don't think that's much of a surprise. It's the first thing I check for whenever I update a Blender version. You know, I'll jump into cycles, see the renders a bit slow and go, no, 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 no. Where's my optics? I need that speed. No, fantastic stuff. And it's also quite nice to see, you know, more support for Intel Arc going on. I think it's pretty cool that we've got developers working on Blender that understand how all of this stuff works. So uh, again, I imagine this is like quite a complex thing to implement, optimize and test for that matter. In addition to this, there's reduced memory usage of volumes in Apple Silicon GPUs, OSL support for new standard micro facet closures from Material X, Byte color attributes are now supported for point clouds and curves, improved Fresnel handling of the glass BSDF shader and added support for light trees in AMD GPUs. That's good. So the benefit of the new algorithm can also be experienced by AMD users. It's a keeper. The LTS in Blender 3.6 LTS stands for long term support, like we said, meaning it will get fixes for up to two years until June 25th. Yay. <laughs> Oh, okay, so I know people are going to love this one. UV editing, time to pack. Packing UV islands has been greatly improved thanks to a new UV packing engine. Yes. Dramatically improving performance on large scale meshes and improving support for non-square materials. On many real world cases, efficiency of the layout has also been increased. So here's a comparison of the default values for packing islands in Blender 3.5 and Blender 3.6. We can see a greatly optimized use of the space of the UV grid, which effectively means we can pack more quality into a texture because more of the pixels are being used. Let's continue. Shape shift. Choose the final shape of the UV packing between exact shape, concave, convex hull, or bounding box, giving layouts that use available space depending on the geometry. The new merge overlapped option makes overlapping islands stick together during UV packing. Pack to original bounding box allows islands to be packed back into the original bounding box of the selection. So basically a lot of work has been done here and UV mapping is like such an important part of the pipeline for so many different workflows. Imagine a lot of people are going to be very happy with improvements in this field. And a little bit more support for manual seams in UV sphere slash cylinder projection and new select similar options, winding and object. Okay, so for some freebies now, in terms of asset libraries, the Blender Studio and Blender Community put together an asset bundle with a collection of human base meshes ready to use for sculpting, animation, texturing, you name it. So this is lovely. This is something that like a bunch of us have already created our own assets for because it's just like such a universally useful thing. So I think it's great that they've actually put this together now. It means that we all have these fundamental human base meshes to work with for any project. Uh, you do have to download it separately though. It doesn't just come packaged with Blender from my understanding, which is fine because we don't really want Blender to become like heavyweight overloaded with a bunch of generic assets. So head start. The default cube is great, but it can be challenging if your goal is to sculpt a character. Worry no more. The human base meshes bundle is here for you. Featuring multi-resolution levels for realistic assets, quad topology for multi-resolution sculpting, UV maps, including UDIMs, creased edges and subdiv modifiers for planar assets, closed volumes for voxel remeshing and face sets. So basically ready to be used for a wide range of workflows, in particular sculpting. And they've got a video here demonstrating what's available and it looks higher quality than I expected as well. It's like pretty good. If you want to grab that, there's a quick link here on the features page to download the asset bundle. But you can basically get it from the demo page on the Blender website.
Okay, this next thing is actually quite a small improvement, but massive in its implications. Maybe I'm overhyping it. I was really excited about this one. Parent space. So we used to like the regular transform orientations in Blender to move things globally, locally, across the normal gimbal, view, and cursor. But now there's the parent. And this is great for those of us that like doing like parent-child hierarchies for like mechanical objects or, or anything really. It allows you to move child objects using the coordinates of their parents. This would have been great like going back to all my like mech generation stuff. But with Python, I was like generating layers upon layers of objects that were kind of intricately connected to the parent of each. Um, so yeah, that's really cool. More little animation changes and improvements. Alt S for smoothing operators, Alt D for blending operators. There's a new IK solver, meaning inverse kinematics. Jonathan Lampel gave a pretty good explanation of that in the official feature video. I think it's a high quality method, which means that a root doesn't have to be at the center of a rig or something like that. I'm not an expert on IK, but nice to have the extra option available. Graph editor improvements, fix the scroll when clicking search box in the NLA graph graph editor, control left mouse button to extend channel selections, NLA editor improvements, graph editor frame channels, display scene duration in the status bar. Sorry, I'm trying to get through these quickly. Weight paint, extended paint mask selection, copy global transform add-on improvements. That's a pretty good add-on. Graph editor settings move to preferences, head tail drawing of bone relationship lines, drivers introduce context properties, key menu cleaned up, Gaussian, Gaussian, smooth operator, graph editor keyframing improved and dope sheep improvements. Whew. You know, I worry that reading all of these little things out gets a bit boring, but I think it really drives home like how many small changes there are that are quite easy to overlook in these updates. They put so much effort into these. And I say it every time, but we're just like spoiled with the effort and the new features that go into these updates. So it's at this point that I shall encourage you to help support Blender. Blender is and will always be free forever. Releases are possible thanks to donations by the community. I recommend signing up if you can. If you happen to use Blender in your workflow, if it's like an important part of your life or your business, then the option is there for you to do so. So you can donate directly or you can also, you know, sign up to the Blender Studio to get access to more content. So you get some value back for your donation, even though, you know, Blender already gives you so much value anyway. But wait, there's more. So have a look thusly. There are so many other improvements, too much to kind of explain in a very vibrant way elsewhere on the update page. Um, the thing which always scares me is related to Python. Custom script directories. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Improvements to Blender handlers, several changes to internal mesh format, new utility to create links. I need to double check this one. So basically, I always check my add-ons to see if they still work for the new version. It looks like they are mostly. However, Bygen still has like a couple of presets broken from a couple of versions back. Um, but everything seems to work overall. If you happen to notice anything in my add-ons that's broken, obviously in 3.6, just let me know. Send me the message so we can get it sorted out. Yeah, the same goes for other add-on developers as well, since I know that a lot of you out there use add-ons for Blender. You know, it's a very vibrant part of the Blender community. Um, if you update to a new version, let the Android developer know but do it respectfully because you know it's only been out for one day <laughs> so give people time to catch up so yeah and of course you can grab the artwork for the splash screen there's a download link for that as well so yeah hopefully that has brought you up to speed it looks like a fantastic update and I'm quite excited to start playing around with it if you want some extra tools for Blender you can check out my store page codisold.online slash store I have both free and paid projects on there you might be interested in our free community material pack a selection of free materials compatible with the asset browser you might like my modular workspaces add-on if you want to speed up your startup workflow in Blender. And we've got a whole bunch of other stuff. There's basically so much to try, so much to learn, and so much to play with. If you made it this far through the video, please consider putting a heart emoji in the comments. This will show me who actually did make it this far, and I love seeing the familiar faces. So thank you for watching everyone, stay safe, and I will see you next time.